Sometimes, as Christians, we can make studying the Bible seem kind of scary, kind of overwhelming. This is a big chunky book, but it really doesn't need to be scary. If you are new to studying the Bible or just wanting to get back to the basics of studying the Bible, I want to show you how to get started and give you some ideas and different methods that you could try. If you're new here, my name's Jenny and this is Prayer and Penguins. Do stick around and subscribe to see more videos from me and Arnold all about prayer, exploring the Bible and Christian life and motherhood. So let's get straight into how to study the Bible. Firstly, what do you need? What do you need to have in order to study the Bible? Of course you need a Bible, but if you don't have a Bible, you can also just grab a phone and find a Bible on your phone. I really recommend the YouVersion Bible app. That's the one I found most helpful. And if you are someone who enjoys writing things down and find that helpful in kind of learning and studying things, then you can also grab a pen and some paper. So now, how do we go about studying the Bible? So the first method I want to talk about is just reading it. And that might sound a little bit silly, doesn't sound like actually studying the Bible, but honestly, I think this is a really underrated aspect of studying the Bible. Yes, it is a good idea for us to dig into the Bible, to look at context and language and history and really understand what the Bible is saying. Study it. But it's also so valuable, so helpful for us to just read it. The Bible is one big overarching story from beginning to end. And rather than always really narrowing down into one specific section of the Bible, it can be really helpful to read a broader arch a broader piece of writing to really understand the wider context. If you were to read a whole book of the Bible in one go, for example, you could really see how these different events fit together, what comes first and what does that then lead to. It can really help to put these different events that you've probably heard of into context of the wider story. So just pick up your Bible and start reading. Some good places to start could be one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke or John, to read the story of Jesus from start to end. The book of Genesis right at the beginning of the Bible is quite a long book but there's lots of stories in there that you probably will have heard. The story of Adam and Eve, the story of Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. You could read the book of Acts in the New Testament to see the story of kind of the early church and what that looked like. Or a book like Ruth or Esther or Job where it really focuses on one person and one person's story. You don't need to be doing anything in particular as you're reading just read it and absorb the story and just experience reading that story. My next idea is to just focus on one question as you're reading the Bible. And that question is, what does this tell me about God? So many of the methods that I've seen for studying the Bible really focus on questions about us, about who do you relate to in this passage, in this situation? Where do you see yourself? What does this mean to you? And these questions can be helpful as part of a wider Bible study, but they are all very me focused, which can at times be very unhelpful in understanding what the Bible is saying. So instead, as you read a passage, take the time to pause and reflect and think, what does this tell me about God? Because we know that God is unchanging. He is the same now as he was when the Bible was written. So we can learn so much about who God is, God's character, what he's like, what his promises are from reading the Bible and just thinking about what it tells us about God, what it shows us. The next Bible study method that you might want to try is the SOAP method. And I actually do have a whole video up on my channel about this Bible study method that I made a few years ago, I think, at this point. But this is definitely a method that I used to use quite a lot. I found it really helpful, particularly when I was first starting to study the Bible and kind of get into this rhythm. It gave me a nice structure while also still being quite simple and just leading me through. So SOAP stands for scripture, observation, application and prayer. And I always used to like writing this out and using it as a written framework, but you definitely don't have to. You can just do this all in your head, depending on what works best for you. But you start with scripture. So looking at the Bible passage, reading the Bible passage. Sometimes I like to write out the Bible passage if it's reasonably short. And then you move on to observations. So things that you've spotted in the text that maybe have surprised you or that you're wondering about, that you've got questions about things that are jumping out at you, standing out to you in that passage. For application, I would then note down and think about anything that I needed to take from this passage and apply to my life. 
how was this passage going to impact my life? What did I need to do? What did I need to change? And finally, prayer being an opportunity for us to pray, thinking about this passage and the things that we've written down in observation and application, and to pray over those things. Maybe it's praying for God's help about some of the things that we want to apply to our lives, or it could just be responding and talking to God about what we've read. If we've read something really wonderful about God's character, we can respond to that in prayer and talking to God about that. And the fourth Bible study method that I want to talk about is the stick method. Now this is one I only learned about fairly recently, but I really like it, I really like this concept. I think it expands a little bit on some of the Bible study methods we've already talked about, while keeping it again quite simple, uncomplicated, not overwhelming. I also think this could be particularly helpful if you're reading a passage that you feel like you know really well, you're kind of reading it and thinking, oh I've already done this, I know this passage, actually coming back and looking at it through this framework could be really helpful to spot some different things, maybe things that you haven't noticed before. So I heard about this method from Abigail Howard on Instagram, she's also got a YouTube channel which I will link down in the description, but this is the Bible study method that she uses and finds really helpful and she was sharing it with all of her followers. So STICK stands for six different things for you to look out for in a passage. So we have sins to avoid, truth to embrace, instructions to follow, character to pursue, knowledge of me, and knowledge of God. So you could simply think through these different things one at a time as you're reading a passage, read it over six times, and go through it individually. You could write down some notes under these different headings as you're reading through it. But I actually also really liked the way that Abigail said she does this method. And it's also quite similar to how I like to study the Bible by having pens and different colours is something that really helps me. So the way that she does this is to give each of these six points a different colour and then she would go through the passage each time with a different colour and just focus on that one thing. So starting with sins to avoid, reading through the passage and highlighting or underlining in that colour any sins to avoid. And then going again with a different colour for truth to embrace, and so on and so on. She actually also does this so that it's one thing per day, so that she looks at the same passage for the whole week, essentially the whole six days, focusing on a different thing each day. And I think that could be a really interesting way to really slow down your Bible study and really reflect on that same passage, meditate on it for a whole week. I think sometimes we can try and race through our Bible study, but I think this is a really nice way to slow down and really spend time in that word. But if you're doing a shorter passage, for example, or you don't want to spend that long meditating on the same passage all the time, you could just do these six different points one after each other and spend a longer chunk of time really digging into it, but one bit after each other. This is kind of reflective of the Lectio Divina method of studying the Bible, where you kind of read through a passage answer some questions, read through again, reflect on something different, and it is a really helpful way of us absorbing the passage rather than just reading through it and then moving on, actually being able to spend time looking at this passage and really seeing what it says. So those are four different ways that you could try studying the Bible, whether you're a beginner or those of us who just want to get back to the basics and try some different methods of looking at the Bible. I know for me, as a busy mum of a toddler, work full time, lots going on, this is the kind of method that I really enjoy, knowing that actually I can turn to the Bible and explore it in a structured way, something that gives me a nice framework that's really helpful for me, but keeps it simple, uncomplicated, I don't feel like I need to read lots of books all the time and dig into what this means and what that means, actually I can spend time just reflecting and thinking through different questions and dig into deeper bits as and when I need to. It stops it being so overwhelming, and I think especially if you're struggling to get started or dig into the Bible, making sure that you have a simple way of doing this is really helpful. Do let me know down in the comments which of these methods you are going to try out for your Bible study, and do also let me know if you have any questions about how to go about studying the Bible. I'd love to chat more about that. But we do hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from me and Arnold. And if you'd like to hear some tips and things that you should avoid when reading the Bible, do check out this video right here. And we will see you very soon for a new video. Bye!